All right, let's call this um, Community Library Network Board of Trustees special meeting to order. Um, the first item on the agenda is executive session. Um, and we can go ahead and move into it. We have some things to talk about um, uh, with our um, uh, interim director and, you know, today. So let's go ahead and move into executive session. Okay, I move that we go into executive session. I know code 74206-1A for the purpose of hiring. Okay, it's been moved to go into the executive session. Um, 74-2061A. Uh, and I'm staying here. Yes, I think that would be okay. good if you stayed, Lindsay. Um, and this is a roll call vote. Class and I. Cree, yes. Robinson, yes. And blank, yes. <laughs> Session planning, and we do have a motion that we need to make. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, hopefully it's the right one. Um, I move that the interim director, Lindsay, um, continues on until June 5th. June, actually, 5th? Or did we say, we don't want to watch. I remember this before. Or June 2nd. Or 4th. No. June 4th? Okay. Oh, well, she should continue until the library opens. On June fifth, because if there's an emergency, yeah. okay, that sounds good. June fifth, like what was it? Eight, eight a.m. Okay, it's been moved to have the interim director <laughs> continue on from May sixteenth through June fifth at eight a.m. Any more discussion? Thank you. Thank you all of you. Yeah, breathtaking. Thank you. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So we now have everything that all in place. I remember that with uh, that with John that there was a weekend where I was like, what? Uh -huh. <laughs> Ooh, you know. So all right, the next. Have we done the public acceptance of the contract? We don't need to do anything else. It's been, okay. yeah. Because it's sent off before the starting date. Yeah, it is, it is. I asked Katie Brereton that today and she said, nope, we're good. We did it, we moved. We did it with our uh, meeting, public uh, part of our meeting at the last meeting. So, all right. So the next item on the agenda is the 2024 budget discussion and that we will need to start with staff. In your um, table packet, like one of the first documents is a sheet that says budget comparisons. And I just wanted to give this to you so we can compare how much of our revenue is spent on personnel and on our collections compared to other libraries. So this data is from um, 2020 and I created two categories. One are libraries that are geographically near us mm -hmm. and then ones that are of comparable service size. And then at the top is our percent of revenues for the current fiscal year and fiscal year 20. Um, so I think it's it's just a bit of data to help as we go forward in this conversation. Um, you know, currently our staffing is at 65% of our revenue and our collections is at 8%. Um, the collections component is quite small compared to libraries of our service size. Um, they seem to be hovering around 12% of the budget. And then our staffing um, is on the low end as well. And for example, Coeur d'Alene Library, they have 76% of their 
revenue is spent on staff and we are at 65%. So again, this is some data to help you understand our budget and how we relate to others. Any questions about that document? Yes. Yes, um, so with the Coeur d'Alene one, the percentage for the personnel obviously is higher, much higher, but so is the collections expense. So I would say that there was something invisible that's not on this that we have to pay for whether it's um snow removal my favorite topic <laughs> or um so, you know the blacktop repair um facility repair so what what do you think makes that difference and um and it's kind of important because uh our current revenue might have to be taken from our collection expense Right, and that's, um, you know, when we get into the budgets that we provided to you as drafts, um, we'll have to talk about where to take the money from, and collections is definitely one of them, which would put our percentages even lower. Um, I don't know the specifics of Coeur d'Alene and, like, what they do and don't pay for since they are a city library. Um, I just know that this is the data that was reported for everyone. So I don't know what they do get to have some of their budget taken care of, like through facilities through the city or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know if that answers your question. It does, and it, it was a question, obviously, mm -hmm. but it was also just a statement, you know, uh -huh. to mm -hmm. you make sure that everybody notices that. The, the ones that, um, I think it's a good, really good point. Yep. The ones that we can look at that might be a little more apples to apple would, would be one is Meridian for sure, because they're, you know, their um, current revenue is closer to ours. Um, personnel expenses closer you know, and they're a district. And so they're having to take care of things exactly the way we are. The other one um, that we would look at is Spokane County Public is also a district. <clears throat> Um, so the ones we might want to, yeah, and look at their, um, expenses for collection, the percentage, so okay. can county public, it's 16% yeah. of their materials and Meridian is 12%. Is Spokane, is Spokane public? Is that one library? It, I think, I don't know. Um, I, cause there's Spokane it's County a, public and. Right. Does anybody know? It's, it's it's not just when you mean one library, like literally one building. Yeah. No, it's oh, not just okay. one building. Okay, it's a. Okay. But it is the city. It, it is like the difference between our district and the city of Fort Wayne. Exactly. You know, so the Spokane County is county. is the count is the all everything right. else, and that is the, the Spokane. No, Public I was just thinking that that was one building. That's a lot of. Uh, that's a big mm -hmm. uh, budget. <laughs> It's a big building. <laughs> yeah. And then um, question on the um, very helpful to have the sheet. Thank you. Yeah, very uh, then the library is geographically near CLM. Those numbers are as of what date? What when year? all of this is 2020. Okay, so above us when we talk about library name, which is CLM, you've got a 23 and a 20. Right. We have 20 to show where we were in comparison to the rest of these libraries at the exact same time and then just what we currently have. And that's why I'm not sure I understood that there. Thank you. So 20 it covers everybody. And do we know of any changes in the geographical or the neighbors? This is this was the only data that I could find that had everything in one place. I haven't okay. um, been able to go and dig into the specific budget. But if we keep it balanced with the CLN 20, and we're apples to apples, right? Um, what do you that, mean by that? The CLN library name at fiscal year 20, those numbers are what we'd be using to look at the 20s of our. Yes, numbers. yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure I read the lines. That's a plural brow, am I right? Well, wait a minute, are you saying all the lower information? You said that was from 23. No, the lower ones are all 2020. Oh, 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, yeah, thank you, Judy. Yeah, apples. So, 
The only thing you have current is our own operations at 23. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything's 20. Thank you. Okay, so and so we have basically whether you're looking at CLN 20 or CLN 23, uh -huh. we have the lowest percentage for personnel and the second lowest for expenses, collection expenses. Correct. So isn't that kind of not good. That's not yeah, that's not a something to brag about. <laughs> that's correct. I mean, I I have worked um in three other public libraries and this is the lowest I've ever seen on collections. So where would you think the other money is being I mean, I I know it's in front of me. I get it. We do, we do this every year the the budget. But I I don't know what the other libraries are not putting their money into that we are. I mean, and I, it's hard to answer that. All I know is that from um, looking at the historical documents that we have mm -hmm. here, like our um, collections budget has only gone up like 15,000 in like 10 years, I want to say. And you should be looking at like a 10% increase every year for your collection. That's why we don't have a lot of our own databases that we subscribe to because those are very costly. And so I don't know why the decision was made not to invest in more collection resources um, here, but I feel like we need to catch up. But yet in the budgets that we have, we are probably not going to be catching up because we need to catch up on staff. And we, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you probably don't know the answer to this, but do these other libraries have um, the vehicles like we have, like the uh, Discovery Bus? And I mean, is that a normal thing for a library system to have those kind of expenses as well? Bookmobiles, yes. Um, not necessarily the Discovery Bus, okay. but vehicles, yes. I was just going to say that with inflation, <laughs> we're probably worse off because we're probably not even able to buy as much, right? Our dollars aren't going as far because I have to assume that our vendor is not like prices have gone down for material. Right. There have been increases, yes, <laughs> in our physical books, yeah. And I'm sorry, what's the service area size on the list? The amount of people that community serves, like the size of the community. Okay. So is that like part holders or? Yeah. No, just the like population. Okay. Not quarter miles or acres or whatever. It's just right. Population. Yes. So service area size is population. Okay. And I can indicate that. Mm -hmm. So, and when you, like, when you look at our number compared to the quarter lane public, so do you look at the population of Kootenai and Shoshone County and then subtract out the city of Coeur d'Alene, the city mm -hmm. limits? Is that how this number was arrived upon? I don't know, because this okay. number is taken from the Idaho um, report. annual report. And so I would have to dig into that and find out. Um, when you say the Idaho, are you talking about the Idaho Commission for Library Statistics that they keep? Okay. Yeah. Well, we don't know what they right. that. I think it's probably one we got to look at. Be sure we have a number that represents the actual population service, which is a dilemma because we do serve Coeur d'Alene. It's not as if we don't. Yeah. All of the libraries, I'm assuming, serve uh serve serve bigger than their um Out boundary. Yeah. Right. Um, but cardholders versus population. Um, when we're talking cardholders, we're not talking cardholders of right of CIN. We're talking card holders of our district. This is population, though, right? This is population. Yeah. So yes. Not even card yeah. Right. Right. Someday we want to look at that because how much of our population is card holders. Right. Like we have that, but the other libraries don't have that. And so I was trying to give you things that I could give. And I think that's fair. I think as we go forward, one of the things we want to do is how we're doing it is do we have more card holders this year than we did last year? We know the population's gone up since last year. We have to do that now, but I think that's part of what our budgeting process needs to be, because the question Vanessa is asking about growth and how much we spend and what's ahead will be a factor. And we've had more people, hopefully, coming in and wearing out our carpet and using up our books and costing us, therefore, maybe more staffing. The ripples just go a long way based on, hopefully, growth in the carpet. 
if possible, can we move on to the next part of this? Or Katie, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, I, my only question, it doesn't have to be answered right now, is if we look at the two districts, which look to me like maybe are somewhat closer to us, to Meridian and the Spokane County Public, and just looking at the percentages, do we have any clue as to why our percentages, we have a clue as to about staff, but do we have any clue as to where are they spending their money that they can spend more money in those areas? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, where, what do we do? What are we, how are we blowing it? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be answered right now. It's, I mean, it's establishing priorities and their collections are their priority. So what, it, what have we, what, what is our budget shown that we've pointed to our, as our priorities instead? That's strategic plan. No, I want to know if, actually where are we spending our money that, that if we're spending less in that area where and we have about the same amount of money, where are we spending more? You know, do we know? I can't answer that right now. Okay. I don't know if you can. But I think okay. there's only one answer. And the, the programming isn't part of collections. Right, but right. Off the top of your head, um, do you think that we spend about a typical amount for a library system on programming? I would say we spend average. Yeah. Huh. Well, that is, I'm going to take a fine tooth comb. I'm going to go over this. Right. <laughs> what do we, what this, is we, a, this is really informative mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. for a lot of different reasons. It will only generate more questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're ready. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Um, before we leave this, this is dated as of today's information. So we'll be another round of it. We're going to have a different data on when that time comes. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So, Gavin, my thoughts. Okay. So, <laughs> we provided you copies again of the salary scenarios in case you all didn't bring them with you um, of the three scenarios and then the um, descriptions just so we can have those as reference and um, Janelle worked furiously mm -hmm. to create these two worksheets um, which have listed on them salaries at mid market and salaries at low end of market and what we have here are these are the two salary scenarios that you all said we should look at right at last meeting Thank you. um and then there is a budget for each of those scenarios so we have our current budget listed in column one and then we have zero percent increase with just growth only and then a budget where we take 1%, 2%, and 3%. Does that make sense to what these sheets are? So um, this is a estimate for our budget because we are only halfway through the year. We don't know what our growth is. Um, that's estimated at $100,000, which is what it was approximately last year. And um, we did not present balanced budgets either. So like if you look at page two of the worksheet, line 86 shows you when we institute the salary scenario, that's how much we're short for this upcoming fiscal year. Does that make sense? So like if we do the mid market and we go with no growth, we we have to I'm sorry. Growth split zero. Zero growth, sorry. Growth zero, zero percent, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um we would have to find within the budget five hundred and fifty eight thousand dollars somewhere else. Where does uh, yeah, help me find that page? Where are you running? So well, I had college completely until five fifty eight. Okay. Line 86. Look at line 86. 
a huge number of fleet label mid market. Oh, uh, I'm looking at the wrong mid market. Thank you. We're looking at mid market. Do you have a? We're looking at mid market. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's no, that's not. It was five fifty six. Five fifty eight. Okay, we're looking at the one that says salaries at mid market. Yes, yep. and then on the second page, okay, there should be line eighty six. Yep. And then if you look across each of the sample budgets, you can see how much we are deficient. Okay, but I missed, I, heard, I thought I heard you say 586 and I couldn't find that number. I said 558,000 oh. approximately. Oh, yes, at the 1% is 0%. Yes. All next to that is a 1%. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that we have, that same worksheet then for if we go for the low end of the market, which is forty thousand dollars less of an expense. I know this is like really confusing for everyone. Okay, okay. So like if you took the low end salary scenario and you go with zero percent and growth only, that's Short, we're short 521,000 instead of 558,000. So that's how you can use these for comparison. Mm -hmm. So we are presenting these as drafts and we are presenting them as an unbalanced budget. And then we need to just begin the discussion of do we move forward with the salary scenarios as they are? Do we need to modify them? And then are there cuts that you all are comfortable making in other areas to make up for that money? And clarification, all these are without E-rate discount, which we never can count on, but we always hope happens. Correct. And how does your crystal ball look for this year? Everything's submitted, but we have not heard anything yet. So if we were to get the E-rate, well, that would add how much to the budget? What line is that? Um, I was reading across the top, and I thought it was page two. Well, all, all the columns. E-rate will affect line 34 and 35. Thank you. That's internet access and telecom. Mm -hmm. And we will get approximately, my math brain is working right, 95,000-ish. Here, hang on, let me get my calculator. <laughs> but still, we're trying to find potential revenue, even though we need the budget for worst case scenario. Right. 100,000. Can we budget with our fingers crossed? Doesn't. And that 95,000 works all the way across. It's 94,514 that we have applied for in E rate discounts. Mm -hmm. So far, it's always happening. So far, mm -hmm. but you know, prior to consolidation, Post Falls. Um, had applied and the system lost their application and they got nothing and they the e rate system wouldn't do anything about it. Hmm. Um, our system has not received approval for e rate till February, so you're paying full price until until then. So, and do you have any sense of anything changing in government sources of doing e rate? Federally or state? Oh. I haven't heard any changes to um, the federal program, and I don't count on the state because it's like, oh, we have money. Okay, we'll, we'll share it. Has oh, we don't have money. We're not going to share it. Has the state always sent money so far? No. Uh-oh. And how, how often? Half the time they did not send money? Once they started it, they had... Um, 
limited monies they would send out and you had to be prompt in turning in your request. If you, you know, came in at the tail end of the deadline, then you didn't get it. Um, as they got more money, they tried to offer it to more things like the uh, mobile hotspots that people check out. Sometimes you got it, sometimes you didn't. Oof. That's just bonus money. It's not, it's not, it's not money I would count on at all. And that's more wobbly than the federal money. Yes. When did you submit it and what is the deadline? We submitted early in the process. Um, we didn't have any bids, so we were able to get it in as soon as the um, process opened in. It was January, February. And so and that that the filing period that they have has closed. And so we're just waiting for. The word waves to start coming. So we were in line. We're in line. Thank you for getting that in early. I want it done as soon as possible. <laughs> it is my least favorite topic. <laughs> Let's talk about some more. Actually, is there a way to check to see if they've received the application? They have. Okay. I want to make sure you don't get lost. No, er, every everything's electronic, and um, the the money that we spend on our e-rate consultant is well worth it because she tracks it and. As soon as it gets input and we have to confirm it, then we get an automatic, yes, we received it. So we know that they have it. So if they forget, you can help remind them. They upgraded their systems in 2016 to where it's all automatic, it's no more mailing it back and forth. It's all electronic. Okay. Is is there any possible way? Um, again, I don't know if this is something that's possible that we could get indication on this list of things that cannot be shipped away on. Um, like I'm looking at the software is a big money number. What line are you doing? Um, thirty three, and you know software, whatever that means. It might mean something that we can't you know, lower because that's actual price of a contract with, you know, with a third party. So is there any way to get um, like a, a check mark or something next to things that can't be altered? Asterisk, I have a moment to confer with Janelle. <laughs> I hear what you're doing, Vanessa, which is the I gotta have some yeah, so there's certain things you can't. And then comes the brutal discussion about okay, I can stand this, you can't stand that. That's what I'm just that's soft and that's one of them, but okay. Okay. So um, you know, Janelle and I have looked through this and to answer your question, it's easier to determine the lines that can be changed. Mm -hmm. It's easier to determine the line items that can be changed okay. versus those that can't. OK, that, that's fine. And um, so I. I've, we've come up with about two hundred and forty thousand dollars in cuts. Um, Oh. Yes, but so what I here's what I recommend is that we discuss these cuts and then I also recommend that we reevaluate the three salary scenarios and see if there are cuts that we can make a little bit like at least get everyone to the regular minimum, but then look at the. Um, the increases that we propose for everyone else. I still want to honor it as much as we can, but if we could save $100,000 here doing something that would get us closer to our goal. Um, so I would like to, you know, have that be one of our next steps is evaluating the three scenarios. When you say save $100,000 from, are you talking about not implementing the full um, 
no salary i want to, we need to make sure we implement and get everyone to the regular minimum that blue column on this year's okay but we in the salary scenarios we also talked about compression we talked about five percent raises and seven percent raises and so maybe we do four percent raises you know what i mean yeah. that's what i'm talking about cutting that hundred thousand dollars and that's just an approximation um but we would still be able to show staff that we value them and that we're getting to the minimum and we're doing the best we can can i ask you about that a little bit um when we did that the compensation study the wages that were shown to be most out of market would be the wages from frontline staff up. So it was our bottom wages that were most out of market. The higher we moved up in salary, administrative wise and stuff like that, the less out of market we were, is that right? That's correct, yes. So in general, if we do make adjustments, I would hope that kind of appalled me because that's what everybody accuses um, institutions of doing, of uh, making sure the administration gets paid and the frontline staff doesn't. You know, I mean, that, that this is a blanket, you know, thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, and we're doing that too. Um, so when we make adjustments, can we make sure that we keep in mind that our biggest transgressions were in the lowest? Definitely. I mean, that is like where my, um, mind is like we need to get the recommended minimum like we need to get that going and get people up to a livable wage and competitive wage to Spokane so that is something we for sure need to do okay thank you mm -hmm. um I've been kind of quiet over here because it's it's a little bit depressing <laughs> you not not painted a very rosy scenario because I know we all talked about what we would like to do um, so I don't like reality, maybe not lining up with expectations. My question has to do with a, you would like a refresher on what ended up happening with, I think it was the county that was um, basically if people were behind on their taxes and there was, they were going to be making past payments or something that that the county wasn't going to share that money. The late fees. The late fees. Was it the late mm -hmm. fees? Do you all remember and that interest. discussion? And and where where did that go? We don't get it. That's not the answer we wanted. <laughs> That's because they looked at their budget and they were struggling too. So like, okay. <laughs> no, but but unlike some um, other institutions that calculate what those interests and late fees might be into their budget, uh -huh. we do not. Very smart. Okay, so thank you. So it didn't really end up impacting our anticipated revenue. Is that what mm -hmm. you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yes and no. Because we will have people who won't pay their taxes on what we will levy, and we won't have the offsetting interest and late fees from other late payers to make up what people didn't pay this time. And so even though we don't budget for it, um, there's that revolving loop of you don't pay for it, but then two years ago, two years later, you pay for it. And you see what I mean? Yeah. So although it's not included in our number, we also don't include, you know, oh, well, you're not gonna pay your taxes. We'll reduce our, we don't do that either. Yeah. Um, I would like to thank you for all of the hard work you've done to make us look clearly at the ick right now. <laughs> you know, I mean, I really, and this is the best, clearest, earliest look that I've been able to have at a budget ever. And I am, I am extremely grateful. I mean, I think it feels very, it feels very apparent, a very visible, very, what is it? Transparent. It's easy to, it's easy to yeah. read. Right. It's easy to get. It's easy to understand. And it and it doesn't leave us guessing. Well, I wonder what if we know it. It's right here for all the columns. There are a lot of columns. 
but <laughs> but <laughs> but I don't care. I love them. I love them, and I and I I think it is breathtakingly awful news, but <laughs> but I think that there's absolutely no way forward until we get clean. So that didn't help anything. Well, yeah. So uh, back to what you were saying, Lindsay. Um, were you talking about presenting another uh, form to us with the shaved off um, monies? I mean, I can like tell them to you right now if that will be helpful, but then we can also bring another updated budget to the next board meeting. I think that would be valuable. That's okay. really valuable. So the line number fees. <laughs> what did you say? Start out with the line number, please. We can get that. Um, we can show those reductions, and then we can look at the salary scenarios and bring that again. Bring these worksheets to you again. So, okay. okay. Can I make a note real quick? Yes. So, if you are going to look between the low end market budgets and the mid market budgets um the pro everything is going to be the same going from one budget one column to the next between the two except for salaries so when we start talking about lines that you know we think we can shave from it's going to be the same amount in either version that gets shaved does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I what well, I see Randy here, and yeah. he needs, he he needs to speak as well. Is that correct? On yes. the roof. Yeah. Okay. So I want to make sure that we have time for that. Um, and um, no, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, I would like to complete this and then move there, but I'd like to save some time. So is there anything else anybody wants to talk about right now about the I, I would like to clarify, because uh, the last question I asked was more actually about um, mm -hmm. the older ones, the, uh, the mid market, low market, low market from last yeah. meeting. Um, were you going to indicate which salary hikes that this indicates that you think would be best to stay a little bit lower yes that you would get new worksheets okay, like perfect. that yes so right. that would be you get a whole little packet okay thank you mm -hmm. okay that is good thank to know so if we look on if we look on these worksheets thank you vanessa um if we look on these these worksheets that so the salary worksheets if you look you the place for the board to look would be the set the percentage the salary percent is that right that's where it would that's where it would sh it looks like enough. so it would it no i meant what, I meant, is, what is your question change. that's where you would that's where we would see the change i mean that's where we'd see the ballpark change i mean that's where we'd look really quickly to see the changes that you might make yes and then in the proposed yeah. Yes. The regular numbers. Yes. Okay. I always find the percentage column the oh, quickest okay. for me. Okay. Um, all I'm saying is that's what Vanessa is saying. If she's go if they're going to change those, we will be getting we, that's a, a good place to start to look. Okay. Um, okay. Anything else? Yes. To the office. Only... No, we're going to do that. So okay. She... Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here at this point, so board draft two of five five for low market, board draft two five five for mid market. The place that we see the changes is really the proposed salary total. Because otherwise, first column is range with 3% COLA compression. They're the thing all the way down. So again, the thing that we're looking at is the proposed salary total column, which is in red. Um, I was, 
all I was saying is if they are going to change them, a good place to see that change is in the percent column for board members. Um, it's not that you, you know, the totals don't matter to, you know, but the percent member, the percent moves will change. But we can we can talk about that when we get the sheet as well. I, I wasn't proposing that we look at it today. I was. No, but I was sort of finding really the only thing to look at is that one that one column. Because everything else on the sheet stays the same. The total salary total. Is what's going to change? Yeah, because everything else. I get used to reading it. On um, low versus mid. All the columns are the same. Identical. I see that right. Seven, one. 106. Um, total staff, total wages. 74 you're, you're comparing the two pages, mm -hmm. mid market to, okay. Mm -hmm. And the, and the only you know, number of staff is the same in both charts. So our percentage is this time going to change because the salary total change. That's the description says the same. I just trying to think about if we made it on one page side by side versus Two pages that make any difference and how meaningful we are matching numbers. I don't have a strong preference. I would like them on separate pages as they are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Quick question if we're. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is the difference between G. Library manager and I, community librarian slash manager, the size of the facility. Would I be right to assume that the community librarian slash manager is managing a larger, one of our larger branches like um, Hayden and Post Falls? That's correct. And there's also different education requirements. Um, the community library manager requires a master's, and the um, library manager does not. Okay. And yes, you're correct about the other. Sizing. Okay. okay, any other questions that need clarification? All right, if not, we would be ready to move on to the roof. Sorry, just the, the number of staff that we have on these charts is what we're currently in. Okay. One of the things that I want to think about is if we wiggle numbers around, cutting or getting somewhere else. Well, we change the number of staff, therefore we'll add ripple back into us. I mean, this the number of staff is um oh, it includes the vacant position. Yeah. So that number, unless we're bringing a new position to have you guys approve for us to add, that number shouldn't change that much because it's filled and vacant. And so therefore, at this time, until we were to wiggle something around so drastically that we change the number of staff, we had to bring something else in. When we did emerging technology a couple years ago, and that's on here now. That as we look at that, remind us of that not only do we, if we change some of the activities we do, it may impact staff we have, and we need to think about that number when we do it. Thank you. Okay. So Randy is here and we want to discuss the um, Hayden roof repairs. Um, I'll just quickly highlight a couple of things. So in the fiscal year 23 budget, um, it was approved that we would spend $185,000 for the roof. And the most recent estimate that we received came in at $233,000. So it's $48,000 slash $50,000 more. Um, so there's a couple of things that ideally will come out of this discussion here, which is approval to move $50,000 from CARF to help pay for that expense and give us approval to 
enter into a contract to get the work done. So those are the things that we'll be discussing later today, but I just wanted to put that on your radar. Do we have exactly right now today? Yeah, I mean, that's what I meant, like right now. So Randy, would you like to go ahead with your presentation? Yes. Question, I have some photos if you want to see the heat and move that really matters to you guys. Yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to see it. If he says it's got holes in it, I believe I him. I <laughs> but I'm interested to see him. Yeah. I think it would be good. No, 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 no. I'd like to see the berm. It's better than long. I want to see the berm. Yeah, it's on the Yes, yeah, I want to see the berm. The berm is. The alleged berm. <laughs> Do you have a buddy? Yeah. No, I think you showed me once that that grass one in the grass and so yeah. up to the window. Yeah. And leaks through. Old grass and shovels. Maybe. Maybe we saw a lot of shovels. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Well, this is just a print from the architect. This are they actual area right? Yes. And built. Okay. This right here is an area that we've already re roofed about two years ago, so we're not touching that. Just the shaded areas that you're going to uh, replace. This is just a, a bird's eye view. It looks we're, okay to me. <laughs> <laughs> there's the berm. So oh. that was a structural <laughs> issue addressed actually right before I started, so probably 15 years ago. So it was arrested. They stopped it. The engineer did not want to push it. Because if you push it, then you start breaking everything. So he just wanted to stop it from moving any farther. So that's what that's the result of. I don't think I'm not oriented yet. Right. Where are, are we? Are we looking down to the room picture? Yeah, looking down to the room. So this, this is where the lines are. This is, this is oh, the staff. Are we, oh, are we looking and then over here would be the main entrance, and this is government way over here. Okay, so, so we're looking at the roof. Yes. We're flying over the roof right yeah, now. So, okay. Where the vent pipes are, but what's the side? Where's the burn? The berm is right. Can you go to the, oh, like, the Randy, picture of the wrong they're berm. They're talking about a different berm. They're talking about front the the front sidewalk oh, berm. Well, I don't know. So yeah, use, the, use the, a different yeah. word. Okay, wait a second. This is a new concept of we have a berm on the roof. You said berm, that's what I thought you were talking about. Well, okay. So going back, so when they did the addition, they thought it was a um large span truss and it wasn't. So this was actually starting to fall down. So it fixed it, no more structural issue. But because of that stru structural issue, this is what happened to the roof because it was actually dropping down. Right. Yeah. Hey. So we'll fix that and I'll want to be there. Sorry, I thought you were talking about. And that leaks, is that? This doesn't leak there, no. Um, it, it is going to, you can see how this is really moving. There's a gap here and all here. So you can see all the wear here. This is the kind of wear that's all over the roof. So, and this roof has been on since? So the first one was done in 07, no, 98, and then 07. So, over the past 15 years? Yes. 07. And when we do a paper underneath, to we replace it? Back down. Okay. Yeah. Again, we'll replace it this time. Then we'll have ice shield down at the bottom. Okay. Which I believe ice shield actually in code now, but it's in the specs. It's a little bit more, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see where the roof is thinner in these areas. How long was it supposed to last? 20 years. And we're getting there. We're, we're right on there. Yeah. So, is so this the assault shingle guarantee of 20? Yes. So, it's interesting. They claim 50 years, but you look in the fine print, it's not really 50 years. It's, they won't do anything after 20. Yes. Well, it's not been 20 years yet. Yeah, is there? Any way to get the original company to take part of that? I don't think it's a 20 of our experience. Well, the one section is 25 and the other is 16 years. So I'm a huge. Look at the insect on the roof. I can see a little more where all these areas here that are all the granules are wearing off. So, which part of the roof is 25 years old? Probably the newer one. The section we're on now, we're coming this way. So okay. here is, this is the staff or tech services and all it is. Oh, okay. And this is, this would be. That looks icky. <laughs> and then back here is part of the original library where the children's is located. Yeah. 
Now, this is the roof that we replaced a couple years ago. You can see the difference on this roof compared to this roof that hasn't been replaced. I can, well, it's kind of hard to tell, but see how it's got good color here, mm -hmm. the grays and blacks. And then you can see, I can't zoom on this, but and have you, you can see where it's cupped. Walk this with roofers? Have you walked it with yes. roofers? Yes. Like it's important. But I could not, at this point, I can't bring loopers in because I bring loopers in, I'm talking about it, but I exclude them from the bidding process. I can't have any conversation with any potential contractors at this point. Because it's uneven, unless you have conversations with them. Well, it can, it can be looked at as I'm giving them insight. Insider, too, unless yeah. you have all in there. Hmm. And I think sometimes you can do that, bring all the suppliers in at one time. Well, we will once we start the bidding process. Then, then they have the right to come in. Yeah, so I pretty, appreciate you being careful. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yes. So that's pretty much all the photos. I just kind of want to give you an idea. Go back to them again now. The um, photos really don't justify how bad it looks. I mean, some of this you can see where the cupping is. Like, you can start to see it here. Mm -hmm. This here, does not look good even to me. What was that? I said, this does not look good even to me. It's not good. Um, <laughs> we push it as long as we can. I mean, we've been saving for five years we've been anticipating we should be grateful that we have at least 185 of it <laughs> uh, sections of roof you said that are worse than others yes. it has leaves yeah. us and it's so the area, that, the area that we placed yeah. a couple of years ago we couldn't wait enough we had a okay. that's right like that. um, this roof has always been a pain in the neck mm -hmm. i just want to say is. so I, this who allowed this? This area here, right after they did the addition, then they had to make a claim and there was a, a recall and move. So this got all replaced on the contractor's dime. Um, but we still have to do that low bid thing. We have to see. We do. Yeah. Low bid. And then I'll go over some of that. Um, it really isn't in the best interest, but that's what the law is. So. Yeah. I still can't get my vision. Or, or, Oh, it's like a workshop test. I can tell if I'm in or out of this. So, so what we're seeing. So here, here's here's where the lines where the courtyard is. I see the courtyard, but I can't tell if these vertical vertical or horizontal surfaces. And this surface looks to me like it's dropping down. It is. Mm -hmm. This is. Well, let's go. Let's go ahead and go. There you go. Oh, see where it's so, getting. Here's a flower. So this is the original building. This is children's. Uh, that's and then, so then the, the addition, the yep. first addition, and the second and that's addition. The Wally Link is where the dark line is. Right. And then we'll first burn. Now we're not. <laughs> huh. I can't really see it, but it is. That one. And what and the children's section roof is not asbestos roof. Uh, as, far, as far as I know, it's fine. It's doing really good. And when was the last time we treated it? Yeah, in a while. It's yeah. been doing really good. No, uh, we don't really have anybody walking on it. I mean, that's magic. Have to. Um, you really don't want to walk on it. Don't have to. No, I this know. roof, uh, you can just don't be careful, but you can walk on this flat roof. You really don't want to. Right. Okay. Well, here, here's I first any more photos should be good with that. I mean, that's all the photos I have, but we don't want to go back to them again. Is everybody okay? I'm fine. Good. Before you leave that one, we talked about firms. This time we're really not talking about firms at all, are we? No. Mm -hmm. No. I just no, when you said firm, I thought you guys were talking about the. What was the new yeah. down here? The new we, right, the burn must be great. We're Hold taking on. the word burn out of this yes. conversation. Yeah, okay. the burn is not fine. Two different degrees. Thank you, Randy. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. All right, so you've seen it. It is going to do nothing but go up. It is needs. It has to be done, um, and we do have the money to move, and we have the money in Clark to move. So. Is there is there any reason to do certain portions now versus later just to ease the transitioning? No. Is this money for something else? We need to do the whole thing. We can't keep pushing it off. I mean, it's definitely gone past its life. 
but I didn't know when we looked at that some was worse than, looked worse than others. Yes, there are areas that are worse, but I mean, we might say 200 square feet that wouldn't make any sense to potentially say that for a couple of years. Let's just get it done now. Okay, so maybe I don't understand how contracts works, but in my mind, a 20 year roof should last at least 20 years. And if it's before that, it seems like the original company should pay part of that. Is that not the way the contracts work? Well, you would have to go out to the manufacturer on that. The contractor themselves is not going to be responsible on that. They're going to be responsible for the workmanship. But I mean, the supplier. All that roof that's it's gone past, it's you know, 25 years, so it's definitely survived its life. It's not it. it's not failing right now. It, and and I it seemed to me that you'd go back if it were failing. So it's not failing, it's still doing it's pre-failing. It's yeah, we're looking at pre-fail. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's aging out. That's what it is. It's aging out. We are understanding. So is that is that a is that right? Yes, it's correct. So would we go longer and it won't meet? Well, maybe, maybe not. But the last thing you want to do is start having to cover the stacks with plastic because you do have leaks. So we're trying to prevent that's prevent the maintenance. So we're we get a couple more years out of it? Maybe. But I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, you'd, it would be more costly to start having leaks. So let's go ahead and get it done now. Not have that potential. A little it's preemptive better. strike. Yes. Yeah. Water in a library is <laughs> bad news. Super bad news. Worse than in a swimming pool. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> in an indoor pool. Yeah. A leak in an indoor pool area right. is not as bad as in a library. <laughs> um, anyway, so any more? Just thinking that with Randy on, on how you're getting bids and, and is anybody out there very hungry? Everybody's so busy that they can be pretty greedy about their leak. I guess their bid numbers. I don't know. I mean, at this point, it has to be full RFP, so we can't go out and ask for anybody. It has to go out for advertisement and all that. We'll be excluded from that. Um, part of the problem with prices so high is just because of that nobody's hungry, so they can give you an astronomical price, and you don't take it. It's not a big deal because they're bloody busy. Um, one of the things I would like to, after we get the documents back from the architect, send it to the lawyer. I mean, because State law requires us to put a bid bond in there, but is that going to cover us? So maybe we can put language in there if it goes past what the bid bond will cover. Does that give us ability to cancel the contract? What I don't want to do is say there's a 20% and the bid bond only covers 5%. I don't want to have to be stuck to that or don't want us to be stuck to that contract. So maybe the lawyer could put language in there that gives us something to either get away from a contract or do something. I don't know if there's any kind of extra protection in there. I would hope that the lawyer could do that. And I mean, I would want to put the document past the lawyer anyway because it's 45 pages long. It's not exactly a small document. Um, for Particularly for our um, newer um, board members, um, the bid process for, can, can e e somebody go over the bid process? Briefly to yes <clears throat> for certain items that are over. Yes. So per the our financial management policy, a new contract in excess of fifty thousand um, dollars must be approved by specific board action. And then the Idaho code requires a full RFP, which means um you go out for an open competitive sealed bid. <laughs> the bids are received, then they're read all at one time. Opening. And the bid solicitation is publicized. And then um once the you know, then we need to run it, we need to run everything through the attorney, and then you have your contractor that's gonna do the work. So that's a summary of the process. Thank you. Um, I just wanted you guys to realize how detailed it is. And we end up, we are required to take the lowest bid. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And being required to take the lowest bid has <laughs> more than once gotten us a contractor who wasn't the coolest. Yeah. 
Just like the astronauts, astronauts never wanted to go to the moon on the lowest bid. I don't know why. <laughs> you little faith. Okay. Can I ask you a question, Randy? Yes. Uh, when it comes to lowest bidders, or you know, obviously we have to take those. Is there is there ever any change orders that they can provide? <laughs> that they, or is that is there bid? That's it. No matter what happens. There are change orders. That's why it's very important to make sure your specs are exactly what you want. Um, you don't want a change order because mm -hmm. especially a lot of contractors they leave money on the table. But if they're waiting for a change order, then they're, they're going to make the money back. Um, yes, and I would I would avoid that at all costs. You don't want a change order. So there's so there's no um, there because it's a law. You have to take the lowest, but there's no regulations or rule mm -hmm. that says that you can't fudge the numbers once you get the job or, you know, change order up. The contractor. Or, the contractor, yeah. No, but it, it's a bit buying contract. Whatever the bid is in this sign, then that's the contract. Well, so they can't they can't give you change orders. Okay. Unless we, not, unless something comes up that we missed, mm -hmm. I don't say we missed a thousand square feet of roof and we wanted it, well, that wasn't included in the original bid, then they can do that. But the contract's binding, so whatever the specs say, they're giving us a bit on that, and it has to stay within there. Okay. Did, did that answer your yeah. question? Yeah. The only part that could exclude somebody is if they're um, non-responsive, so if they don't meet the qualifications, they could be rejected and not be part of the bidding process. So that's that end part when it comes to the director, look it over, make sure it is responsive, and then if it's accepted or not. So they may be the cheapest bid, but not be considered non-responsive, and then they'll be excluded from the mm -hmm. bidding process. What, what's non-responsive? They don't meet all the qualifications. Oh, they don't meet. Yeah. Which also can, can lead to, not lead to, but part of the evaluation is reference check, just like you do on people. We need to find out what's that contractor, who you served, and how it worked. But we can't exclude them for that. We can't exclude anybody for that. If we get a reference and they have a bad reputation, we can't exclude them for that. So as far as I know, unless there's something. I think that's worth looking into, yeah. We'll figure that out. The other thing is discovery. If you get up there and discover that there's more rotten wood than you thought and nobody could see it until they took off, yeah, tingles and they took off. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Something like that, where yeah. they would give a, you know, they would be the. Uh, there's a little bit of it's fair. Nobody knew what was going to happen that way. So you, how do you negotiate that? And I don't know that you could. I guess that's a good question for the lawyer if there's some language in there that would protect us, but I mm -hmm. probably not. Um, we do. Hey, we have been requested um, that we have. Well, we have six minutes. We have. It's been requested that we. This has an action item next next to it, and um, the two the two um, motions look to be one is to move fifty thousand dollars from car um, into what you move it from where to where. You can authorize the use of CARF, um, but to actually pull the money out of the account will require a resolution that you will again vote on, but you wouldn't have to do that until we're ready to cut a check. All right. Please let it work for us till then. Okay, so we don't need them. You still want a motion to allow us to move forward with the bid, knowing that you're going to make a resolution to approve money coming out of CARF. Are you still on how much? Fifty thousand dollars was the request. I would say approximately. I mean, okay. you'll know the exact amount once you uh, award the bid. Okay, so you are looking for one motion to enter into a contract. To what would what would what did, what does the motion need to be to publish the RFP? Publish the RFP. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the. Estimate here's from an architect. We don't have an estimate from any contractors at this point. Okay. That's just a projection, projection from the architect. Great. And who's the architect on this one? Um, Builder Stopper. The architects. Architects are challenging to manage that. And so they're going to be sure to put request enough money to cover. Mm -hmm. Typically, they're going to overestimate it. I'm really hoping that's the case, but we're not going to know until we actually get the And that's where you get to be the manager of description of what you want to have done. 
Sorry. And that's not a small project. Yeah. We need to allow you time to get that done thoroughly. Thank you. Um, uh, for those of us new to this, RFP stands for, for request for proposal. Um, okay. Well, I just have a question that perceived really, um, because it wouldn't make any sense to move forward with publishing an RFP if, if there was a member of the board that wasn't going to authorize the use of CARF funds. So, I mean, mm -hmm. should should we motion to authorize the use of the car car funds for this project or do we just need to know currently by consensus if that if any board member has a problem with it it has to be unanimous is that what you're saying no no it wouldn't have to be unanimous i'm just saying like if we pass a motion to publish an rfp but then the very next motion to authorize car funds doesn't pass then oh. that's what i'm saying that would be a problem it might be something we want to do now, put it all together. We either put it together or we do the CARF authorization first, is what I'm saying. We just don't have a resolution Correct. and we don't have an exact dollar amount. Right. So right. But I mean, I, if I were to make said, such a motion, it would be just simply to authorize use of CARF funds toward the payment road. Not to exceed okay. the amount of. Um, would you want a parameter on it? Can't have all. No, um, I, I don't know why we would have to put a parameter on it right now, because we were just hearing that that the numbers that we received were from the architect, not from a contracting firm. And so it may be different. Um, Hopefully less, but that's why I wanted to yeah. come, come camp on it. And the, this, this, if we choose a number, is that a public number that the there's no what the number is that they can bid against. Mm. You mean choose a number to move from from CARF? The numbers that we have set aside to do the roof. It's yeah. amazing how bids match the number you set aside to do the roof. Well, so this something. discussion is all public. And therefore the number is. Mm -hmm. So I just want to think through how we help manage. Maybe Randy, you have some Council on the number range you want, not to exceed. Uh, I'm just thinking. What I would like, okay. So what we're at, what we're suggesting is that we enter. We we have a motion where um, to publish an RFP. Yeah, I, I I'm not exactly certain what it is, but what, description. Um, isn't that what we're doing? Mm -hmm. I guess I think I guess I'm feeling like you're asking for a motion that's bigger than what we need to do today. No, I'm looking for one that puts parameters on it. Well, maybe, and this is where I was going, which is, mm -hmm. is there any, is there, if we have consensus that that everyone on the board rec recognizes mm -hmm. that the roof yeah. project's not going to get done unless there's money that's taken from CARF, yep. if everybody acknowledges that, then I don't know that we necessarily need the motion. I'm just saying it wouldn't make any sense to publish the RFP if there was a board member that didn't want us to use CARF money, and, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's is there anybody the discussion here who I'm trying to have. Is there anybody here who doesn't want to use the CARF money? The group has a group. Not me, I just need to extend the meeting and it's three buck. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, I need a motion. How many minutes do we need? 15 to be safe. We can quit sooner. <laughs> I move we extend the meeting to 320. Okay, it's been moved to extend the meeting to 320. Is there discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, sounds good. That is done. Um, if you want, can I? Yes, I'll, let me try my motion out now that we are have some consensus that we all understand we're going to have to sign a resolution about the CARP money. Um, okay, I move that. We publish an RFP to replace the Hayden Road. Okay, it's been moved that we to publish an RFP to replace the Hayden Roof. Is there discussion? Okay, so the RFP is just something that's published that says we're looking for bids. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Or, I thought it was a much more extensive document yeah. that Randy is going to prepare in conjunction with yeah. our attorney. Yeah. That's yes. What it is. yes, once that goes out, we're asking for people, we're essentially committing to that. Yeah, what happens uh, if we now then write up the RFP? We send it out, and you can have two extremes. Nobody bid because they think it's not the right number. Or a couple of people bid if you don't feel it qualified. That's where I'm trying to give us some protection of how do we manage that. So when you say qualified, what do you mean by that? Because we cannot, since we're a public entity, we can't, we have to take the cheapest bid as long as they're, you know, the qualifications within the specs, then we have to accept that. Why that's hard. I remember this from the state board. <laughs> um, okay, go ahead. No. All right, any more discussion? It's been moved to publish the uh, RFP to replace the Hayden roof. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, and anybody opposed? I know. I, I um. I mean, I guess I would just say, if there's any sort of hiccup. <laughs> like we would be notified, right? I mean, I um, I appreciate how you presented it, Randy, and how you understand how important it is that the RFP say what we needed to say and that it's going to work with the attorney and and so you know keep us informed i guess if, if something if something goes awry would you all pref uh want us to have a resolution at the next meeting to move money from car i we're not going to know the exact amount to move until we have awarded a bid. Okay. And it's we just we need the, the resolution authorizing taking money out of car. And so until you know how much money you're going to take out of car, it would be mm -hmm. um it, it would be silly to have a resolution. It's like, oh well we we're gonna use this. I'm noting in the minutes that by consensus carf may be used you know, towards the roofing project. So we know that that you guys have already decided that that's okay. It's just we don't have an exact amount. I get that. Okay. Um, also, I would like to let you know that in Robert's Rules of Order, consensus actually is um, as as binding as a a motion. Yeah. That what was that before? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, it is when you use the um, uh, uh, rules for small boards. So okay, because it's a little more casual, but um, just just for that. I'm sorry, one more question. What is our time frame on this mm -hmm. project? So I need to go back to the architect and finish up some of the specs, and then. I'll give it to us or we can give it to the lawyer. Then once we have that, then we have to publish it in the paper. So realistically, it's a couple months out at best before we actually get results. I think that's sure. And then Randy estimated it would be two to four weeks to complete the project. Is that right? Yes. Once it's going. Right. Because they're going to have to work with us a little bit. Obviously, we don't want to shut the library down. So they're going to have to work in some areas and then close other. So we're essentially going to close one of the entrances and then have the other one open and switch that back and forth. So that's going to delay the project. Um, but still, I mean, we'll get it done in a timely manner. But the biggest part that's going to slow down is get the paperwork back from the architect, getting it to the lawyer, and then out for publication. I think it has to be out for seven days, uh, paper. But, and then, you know, if we don't get bids, I don't know. I think mean, it's very possible. Yeah, that's what, I'm here. That's what we're finding. <laughs> But we might as well get started because if, if we don't get uh, well, and that's a hard one because sometimes the bids don't always include everything in spite of whatever your list shows. Well, if it doesn't include everything, then they would be considered uh, non responsive and then they would be excluded from the bidding process. And so, it, which attorneys know more about how to write up bid specs? One of, one of the folks at the firm has that experience. I'm not sure which one. I mean, we'll just consult with our attorney and then if she. There is a difference. It's worth trying to be sure to find somebody who's 
Right. So for give us direction. They come out of a lot of words too. So. Randy, what's the last big project that the network's done? In comparison to this size, probably the remodel. Um, all the projects we've done late, but we haven't required a full RFP. So this is the first one I can remember as far as facilities that's required a full RFP. Facilities. Yeah. And what what year or yeah, what year was that? Oh seven. Oh yeah. Five or really cool thing. Oh, before we move off the topic of facilities, do I do I have time to ask a question? Mm -hmm. Okay, I was um, reviewing the raw data from the survey that our consultants did from the strategic planning, and it was so odd because in there, there was reference to um, the Hayden remodel that never happened and how that remodel would have given staff a, sta a, staff a safe room. So that never happened. Is that right? Where are we then? That's correct. Like, um, from what I under, and you can speak to this too, but from what I understand, there was some consensus about the interior workroom mm -hmm. remodel for staff. And then it was realized that staff actually were unhappy with what was going to happen to the space. And so Amy then Amy decided not to move forward with the project until they could understand and then we got a new manager and it's just not oh, been happening it hasn't been a priority well the the from what i saw from the reference in the survey uh, my the inference to me was this was a staff member that felt that that still needed to be on our you know part of our long-range planning mm -hmm. to make sure that all staff have that um, and I, 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 I don't know why I did not realize um, that that was going to be a part of the remodel or the, I, anyway. So I'm just bringing it up since we're talking about facilities that, you know, just make sure it stays top of mind. It is. We definitely had plans to get that done. So then the, the other question is, as you look at this remaining financial year, which is still October 1st, do you see anything else happening? You know, just getting this done by October first will be a great accomplishment. Is there anything else that's going to need to take a bite out of our budget that you know of? There's always the unknown, and that's what we have cushions for. And facilities, you know, when the equipment doesn't work right, but have been known things. You know, and I know you you gave us a plan one time, and I don't have it in front of you. It's things you were seeing and life lifespan of those kinds of projects. And not in large projects, no. Like so, there's always those failures, but. Say it one more time. Uh, we don't have any big project plan at this point. And there's always failures, but you might know the AFAC system here is, you know, way the word uncertain, but at this point, not. Okay. Then between October 1st and uh, this fall, after that, what comes up on our to be done list? Do you have anything? We don't know that we're prepared to answer that question. That's, that's fine. Yeah. That's part of what the budgeting is going to lead to yeah. here. Uh, we just need to be better equipped and it takes time because you get consumed getting this project done and i don't diminish the scale of what that takes but i think it as we go along it would be helpful then yeah potentially reconstruct the same sheet that i can't haven't thought of in a while that you've given to us before with an updated version of yep here comes the roof that's going to get done that's going to take that much money it's okay let's we have we're, we're close and, and I think right at this point in time, we don't have any um, special dates to look at. To release. I know, after having, I know, for the moment, just hold your hold a moment. You don't know. All right. So um, we will be ready to adjourn. Um, actually, I have a comment. Um, just because we all took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and also of Idaho. Um, so I think that it behooves us to actually know what the Constitution says. There's misinformation floating around in the public that um, something about a, a constitutional mandate, let's say. Um, and it's floating around where? Uh, in public. Okay. And sent out to people. Um, 
Okay, a constitutional mandate of separation of church and state. Um, there's nothing in either the United States Constitution or the Idaho Constitution that says anything about separation of church and state. Um, the whole concept of separation of church and state came about in 1801 and 1802 through a series of letters between Thomas Jefferson and the Danbury, a, a committee of the Danbury. Okay, Baptist. Rochelle, this isn't on our agenda. Okay, but it's just, it, if we're going to uphold the Constitution, we need to know. I don't know sense. ways in which we haven't here in this board meeting, in this boardroom, and, you know, during, I mean, I don't know ways, but if it's, yes. if we have, we need to put it on our agenda, and it needs to be talked about. Um, but have we in this board meeting, you know, or as at acting as board members, have we, as a board, have we done that? Have you seen that? If people are misinforming the public, saying that some, the Constitution says something that it does not. As a board, have we done that? Because this is a board meeting, and it's about a board, and it's about, you know, so as a board, as this board, meeting as this board, is that something that we've done? Because it is, we need to put it on our agenda and we need to have our attorney here to talk about it. Uh, no, not as a board. It's just that the, okay. it's supposed to protect the church. It doesn't protect the state from any religious speech or religious okay. ideas. If, if it does come to your attention that it's something that this board has done, then please let me know. Because that would be really that would be something very serious, and we would want our attorney here, and we would want to be in an executive session to talk about this, and we we would that would require a special meeting. I mean, let me know if that is something that we have done as a board. Okay, no, um, not not as a board. Okay, um, okay, then it's like we're not upholding uh, our oath of office. I would really like this conversation. It's not here. If you would like to talk it over about putting it into an agenda, I would be happy to do that. Okay, would you please? Um, that that would be just fine. Okay, yeah, the Our, Constitution is super important. Okay, that sounds good. Um, at this point in time, I would like, are we ready to adjourn? I need a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Okay, it's been moved we adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nobody's opposed?